When you've got lots of lighting in your vivaria like I do, and you should do, ensuring that the air temperature remains in a comfortable range for your reptile can become quite difficult. In poorly insulated enclosures made of glass, which usually have full mesh tops and are therefore quite well ventilated to begin with, this isn't often much of an issue, but in wooden or PVC enclosures, overheating is a very real risk. Therefore, getting to grips with ventilation is essential. As air gets warmer, it becomes less dense, so hotter air will quite literally float on top of cooler air. For this reason, where air is actively being heated, it will form a thermal updraft, otherwise referred to as just a thermal. You can see thermals inside Vivaria quite easily if you sprinkle some dust above where the air is being heated, such as at a basking site. Here, the air is being warmed through contact with the hot basking surface. In fact, any hot surface in the enclosure will yield the same effect. In particular, lights and light housings will get hot to the touch and so yield thermals. What this demonstrates is that the moment a unit volume of air becomes hotter than the air around it, it will rise upwards. So inside a box-like enclosure, the hottest air will be at the top and the coolest at the bottom. Now, it follows that the coolest air will be around the same temperature as the air in the surrounding room, whereas the hottest air will be significantly warmer than this. Therefore, the hot air will want to rise up out of the enclosure if it encounters a vent. Conversely, the cool air will have no such tendency, so air will tend to flow out from the top of the enclosure and must be pulled in at the bottom to replace what has been lost. The faster this flow of air occurs, the lower the average air temperature within the vivarium will be. So, if you want to reduce the average air temperature in the vivarium, you've got to increase the flow. The simplest way of all to do this is, of course, to add more vents. You can buy more of the circular vents normally used in vivaria if you want, but a more effective solution is to add an area of mesh, which can be purchased with convenient plastic frames making the mesh easy to fit. Simply adding more vents is a passive way of increasing airflow. To have a bigger effect, powered movement must be employed, meaning fans to help draw air out of the top of the enclosure and or to push it into the bottom. When it comes to fans, you again have a couple of options, the cheapest and most readily available of which being computer fans. Personally, I've opted to use Lucky Reptile Terra fans, which are very similar to computer fans, but are really quite quiet and are part of a plug and play system, so no wiring up is required. Whichever fans you go for, before installing them make sure that they work, and check which way they move air by dropping strips of tissue next to them. Doing this is going to tell you which way you want to orient the fans, depending on whether they will be at the bottom or the top of your vivarium. I made a couple of different wooden structures to hold the fans outside me of area over the vents, as the fans themselves weren't quite big enough to span some of the vents. The idea is that the wooden frames can simply be screwed onto the back of the vivaria. My favourite design I came up with was this one made to hang over the back of an enclosure, as it includes a thermometer with its probe specifically positioned to equilibrate with the temperature of the air passing through the fan. If you aren't afraid of using a saw, the simplest way of all to install fans is just to cut a hole in the side of your enclosure and rest the fans in it, like I've done for me collared lizards. A plastic framed area of mesh covers the fans from the inside of the enclosure, thus preventing the lizards from coming into contact with the fans. So by this point in the video, you should hopefully have a pretty good idea of how to go about reducing air temperatures within a vivarium, but what is left to be discussed is perhaps the more important question, which is, when should you go about trying to reduce the air temperatures? To answer this, we first have to settle what we actually mean by the air temperature in an enclosure. Generally in reptile keeping, it's believed that you should put all of your heating elements at one end of the enclosure to achieve a horizontal air temperature gradient. This general misnomer is one which arises from the fact that the thermometer left to absorb the radiation coming from a basking lamp will get hot in precisely the same manner as would a rock, and hence, it doesn't actually equilibrate with the temperature of the air around it. In other words, a thermometer in direct view of a basking lamp doesn't actually tell you the air temperature. 
As it happens, horizontal air temperature gradients within Vivaria are generally much smaller than people would make you think, and this is actually quite easy to demonstrate. So if you take a look at Red the Corn Snake's enclosure over here, you'll see that here there is not really any lighting or anything of that sort, because um, it's all bunched up over this end. Now if we take a look over here, I've got a thermometer and I've only just opened the doors to this enclosure so um, it's actually it's not um, registered that change yet. But if we take a look, you will see that the temperature being read on it is about 25 degrees Celsius. Now if we put that down and uh, excuse the snake and go to the other end of the enclosure, we will see that this is also reading 25 degrees C, even though it's at the other end of the enclosure. And the critical point to note here is that that thermometer has been sat in the shade. And thus, um, I should have demonstrated to you that where thermometers read different temperatures along the length of a vivarium, it's generally because they've been absorbing radiation from basking lights, um, not because there's actually an air temperature difference. Hence, why when the thermometer is in the shade, it doesn't actually read anything particularly different from the thermometer at the other end. What we've established is that instead of a vivarium having a large horizontal air temperature gradient, they are more likely to have a small horizontal air temperature gradient, depending on how the lamps are positioned, as well as a vertical temperature gradient. The area of this joint gradient which matters most is that which is coolest, as this represents the minimum temperature that the vivarium occupant can attain. We can get an idea of this temperature simply by pacing a thermometer out in the open in the shade at the bottom of the vivarium. When this temperature reaches a certain high value, your herb is going to cease basking, and if it gets higher still, there's a risk of it overheating. When this temperature is in the comfortable range, your herb will shuttle to and from the basking zone to maintain its body temperature, assuming that the radiation at the basking zone is indeed akin to sunlight. If this temperature is too low, you can expect to see your reptile basking for prolonged periods. Critically, understand that the specific temperature anywhere in the enclosure isn't really that important. So long as this air temperature is within a reasonable range, and you offer the right radiation at the basking site, the animals will behave so as to ensure their own optimal body temperature. Now then. What is to be considered the comfortable range for the temperature measured in this location is of course going to depend on the species, and as I've discussed in the past, one way of determining it is by consulting weather data. Furthermore, what is acceptable will change depending on the time of year, and again this is a concept discussed in one of my other videos. With all this being said, to give you a rough idea of what you're aiming for, for all of the temperate species that I've kept, being leopard geckos, collared lizards, a corn snake, western green lizards, a bearded dragon and twin spotted rat snakes, summer temperatures between 15 and 25 degrees C are about right, and winter temperatures between 0 and 10 degrees C work well. For tropical species, something between 20 and 30 degrees all year round is probably going to work, but again you should consult weather data to be certain, as some species favour conditions you would least expect. With all of this information in hand, you can decide when and if you should have fans running on your vivaria. The best solution would of course be to have fans present all year round and to link them to a cooling on or thermostat, set to the appropriate temperature with the probe positioned alongside your thermometer in the shade at the bottom of your vivarium. As an additional layer of protection against overheating, if you are going to run any of your lights through a thermostat, put the probe for this thermostat in the bottom corner of your enclosure in the shade and set the set point to something a little bit below what your herb could maximally withstand, so in the most common circumstance you'd set it to around 33 degrees C. Thus, if you happen to be out on a really hot day and all the fans on your vivaria malfunction, this thermostat rigged up to your lights is going to prevent a catastrophe. So having watched through all of this video, you may feel that I've prodded quite a few holes in your ideas of how to set up heating for reptiles. I mean, if I have said that air temperatures at the basking site are very difficult to measure accurately, and indeed that these are not particularly important, 
How are you supposed to go setting up the correct basking zone for your reptile? Additionally, you may be wondering where surface temperatures come into the equation, as today I've only been talking about air temperatures. Both these topics I will return to in a couple of months time, because for today, I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye guys.